Hey guys, we are back. Alright, so last time we went ahead and took Skeggy. Um, we also made sure to kind of put down that Skaven Rebellion, but now we have to put it down for good. Uh, there's still 20 of them but uh, in the stack, but they're very weakened, and we have plenty of troops to deal with that. All we have to do is go ahead and heal up for a turn and we should be fine. Oh, well, what's he gonna do? He's gonna see just again. I wouldn't suggest it, uh, but that's fine. He put his troops together, so there's only 12 of them. Tar 17, so that actually helps. And we're going to have backup from the garrison. So, uh, the only annoying part is that he delayed our construction for the gold mine and for the insect breeding farm. So, other than that, no big deal. Get 500 gold from a technology, or from researching technology. And we got 10 ancient plaques. Alright, sunburst standard of hexawaddle. A fragment of the lost plaque is found and hurried into Mazdamundi's hands. The Slan Mage Priest studies and learns that Chotek was an old one whose temper was as fierce as the fire he controlled, as hot as the sun itself. Of all the Slan, Mazdamundi is the fiercest with a temper just like Chotek. On Mazdamundi's orders, the Skink attendants prepare the way for fire and fury as he begins the chance to initiate the Ritual of Ferocity. Right, and we have to get a we have another mission get a trade agreement going with uh, the humans here so first things first uh, we're gonna look at the rights the right of ferocity costs 1400 gold um, and we need 12 turns to get it so uh, that's kind of annoying um, we're not gonna get that in time so they gave us a mission we cannot complete I don't think Oh, actually, that is a mission that lasts until we complete it, so that's good. But we have ten turns to get a trade agreement with the New World Colonies, the sign of Tlazakult. Uh, Tlazakultly and passive is, is patient and determined. His sign is flocks of birds suddenly becoming still and silent, perching for days and never moving. The great plan will be revealed in time. Until then, the Lizardmen must grow in power, both militarily and economically. This will please the old one and award his followers a sacred spawning. So we can get uh, a sacred spawning of blessed horned ones. Uh, if you play the original Total War Warhammer, uh, blessed spawnings are basically uh, regiments of renown, but they're just upgraded versions of these units. Uh, not as good as regiments of renown, but better than their normal counterparts. So just to explain that. Let's research technology. We can either get uh, plus five, five melee defense for source units or plus two experience for skink units. Um, you know what? We can get plus two experience for source units right after. So I, I like the experience. Upgraded units are always good. They're better than their normal counterparts. So we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and take out the Skaven. This isn't a battle at all. So we're just going to auto resolve. Barely lost anybody. Um, we are going to go ahead and uh, replenish our forces, though, because we are going to want to go ahead and start moving towards Chotek's causeway. There are more Skaven over there, so we're going to want to go ahead and do that. Um, we still cannot build the Holy Ziggurat. That is one of our quests, but we have two turns, and we should have it. Um, so that is awesome. As for right now, you know what? We will go ahead and get a 20 stack going before we go ahead and charge headlong into those Skaven. And we're going to get shielded Source Warriors. Um, protect us from those Slinger units that they have. Uh, the, uh, the computer likes to spam the hell out of those, so we're going to go ahead and, and do that. Everybody's getting along with the Blue Vipers. A uh, little bit odd. There's a Savage Orc tribe getting along with everybody. Alright, War Babies. Recent spawnings have favored the Artisan Skinks over the Saurus Warrior cast. Indeed, workers are important to the Great Plan, but the world is threatened from within, also, and must be defended. 
you must be prepared for whatever foul ploy the vile servants of the ancient enemy or the great horned rat may unleash next. All right, so we can either have negative 50% recruitment costs for Soros units or uh, negative 50 for skinks. We're going to go Soros. Soros are better than skinks. Sorry, until I can get chameleon skinks, it's Soros every single time. All right, so now we have more growth and uh, casualty replenishment in this province. Um, let's see if we can get this trade agreement going here. Who calls? You have a proposal? We are willing to hear it. Yep. On it. There we go. So we have that. We're also going to get military access just in case we need to run through their lands. Oh. They're going to go ahead and offer me an alliance with 200 gold to boot. We'll take it. Will. And I still want military access. I don't agree. Ah. Right. Well, we got everything else we wanted from them. So we have an alliance. Um, and we have a trade agreement. So we really don't have to worry much about the south uh, for right now since they're kind of guarding it. And we know the savage orcs are around here. So we're going to move north. And... We have our, I believe, our first blessed spawning. So, yep, there it is. We can't recruit it because we already have a 20 stack, but there you go. Um, if you remember, we saw some Skaven run into this settlement previously. So let's go over here. This should be a Skaven settlement. All right. There we go. And of course, we're going to declare war. Let's see what they have here. Okay, so they have eight in their army, and then Choke Tech's Causeway has looks like another 13. So they have 21, but our units are much better than theirs. So we're gonna go ahead and attack. Um, and there are no walls. And looks pretty like a pretty easy fight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and auto-resolve it, only because, not that I'm scared or anything, just because it's such an easy fight, you might as well, don't want to waste the time and effort. Um, we're going to go ahead and sack it, just because the unit replenishment is so high, so we'll do that, and then we're immediately going to go ahead and take it back over. There, that's annoying. All right, well, thought we could have uh, gone ahead and done that. Um, and we got another skill point. So let's look here. All right. So we have telekinesis, my negative 15 missile resistance. We have protection of the old ones. Uh, magic resistance. We have be calming. Cogitation. Cogitation. Uh, contemplation is the path to alignment. Correct interpretation of the great plan. We're going to go ahead and keep going down this this road. I want as many winds of magic as possible for Mazdamundi. Um, oh, that's enemy winds of magic. Never mind. Um, what to get then? Uh, we're going to upgrade the net of Amantak. Yep. Uh, again, I showed you how effective that spell can be. Why not use it? And since we got that 20% uh, buff to unit, unit replenishment. We're almost at 100% already to take down Chotex Causeway next turn. And then, since we went up here, we're just going to go ahead and take the mirror, mirror Pool of Tepak. And then we'll take the Fallen Gates. And then we'll go to Sildra Tor. Just because we do not want the Dark Elves that close to our province. Dark Elves, uh, I've noticed, they get more powerful as the game goes on. I know, yeah, most most races do. The lizard men are actually pretty powerful from the start, and then everybody kind of catches up to them. So we want to make sure our uh, enemies are as weak as possible for as long as possible. That's just my logic there. Well, there's Clan Naw. Where are you going, you cheeky monkey? That's a 20 stack, okay? He might be going to the Ziggurat of Dawn. We're going to go ahead and take Chotex Causeway anyway. I want to go ahead and get rid of these rat men in here. 
Uh, I am assuming since he came from... Since he came from the Mirror Pool of Tepak, that they have an army there as well, that they have settled it. Um, we're gonna see what he does here. Uh, I want to... Oh, we can build a Holy Ziggurat, so we're gonna do that. The Ziggurat of Dawn has five. Okay, so... Uh, what are they, just skinks? All right. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna get evasion. Um, one, because for Mazda Mundi, I don't know if this is for any other. I haven't used any other magic user lords in this game yet. Uh, but he not only does he get the plus six percent speed for the evasion, uh, but he also gets a plus five melee defense bonus. So I I don't know if that's new for Total War Warhammer Two, or if that is Mazda Mundi specific. But that is really nice. Um, that's gonna get him hit less by uh, his melee counterparts attacking him and just to be safe um, do I even want to put a lord there? So the lord's going to put us in red economically and I mean we can take out a 20 stack it's gave it no problem at this point in the game pretty much no matter what so we'll let it play out we'll see where they go Hopefully he goes north, to be honest. Oh, nope, nope, he went right right where I was expecting him to go. Alright. <laughs> Capture and occupy the mirror pool of Tepic, okay. So, we will go ahead and do that after we get rid of these Skaven, but we have to get rid of these Skaven first. These guys are going to be a real problem. And to be honest, I'm not even going to upgrade it. But I am going to upgrade the Monolith of Fallen Gods. As you can see, uh, it increases income, uh, it increases growth, and you get better units in the settlement to defend it. So, if the Ziggurat of Dawn goes down, oh well, uh, that happens sometimes. Oh, there it goes. Alright, we'll fight it just to thin their numbers a little bit. Not that it's going to matter much. Maybe we'll take a couple of them down, who knows. Uh, in this situation, I am not going to go too heavily for the Lord. I'm just going to go for the units and try and take out as many as possible. And I have all melee, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna throw them in there. Uh, there's really not going to be much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just, this is going to be a slaughter of epic proportions. Look at all these rat men. Ugly buggers. Every single one of them. Alright. Okay. I'll tell you what though, we can... <laughs> gonna make it count, that's for sure. Alright, we're just gonna watch this happen. Alright. And yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a loss for us, but in the long run, I think we'll take out uh, a good number of their warriors. Unless we'll see how many range they have. Let's see here. They have one slinger, two. So they have two slingers. So this is just a ton of clan rats. Oh, there's another. There's a, a night runner there, also missile infantry. But this is basically a ton of clan rats. And I mean, they're not super weak, but they're not super strong either, so we're just going to do this again to thin their numbers. I'm not too worried about tactics on this one. Just go ahead and do what you do and try and take them out as best as possible. Go ahead and see what it looks like here. I mean, again, you can see this is a 20 stack on a five stack with no lord and they are faring quite well um, however no no matter how good our tactics would have been there's no way we would have won, won the day here but again just trying to thin their numbers you can see on a few of their units we're going we're doing pretty well all right so 
again. It's the price you pay sometimes. Hope you all are doing well wherever you are and whenever you are. Let's see, oh, okay. So, he is probably going to be mustering better troops if he can. Again, I don't think that's going to matter much because once we get in there with our far superior troops, uh, we will win. Uh, ambush and defeat one armies. Uh, ambushing in this game with the AI is so hard because normally you're chasing the AI. I'm not even going to worry about it. However, you do get <laughs> three Blessed Sword of Spear spawning, so maybe with a secondary hero I will, but usually with my main lord, I like to just chase guys down and, and slaughter. So we're going to go ahead and take out the escape when we can. We're also going to upgrade Skeggy. You see they have a negative six. Public order. So this is going to increase their public order. It's going to allow me to build a building that uh, ups the public order. We want Skeggy to be viable. We want this port. Um, it gives us income per turn, plus it gives us growth. Um, plus, it's always good to have port cities if you can. Easier to get around the map that way, especially when you're a map surrounded with water. So we'll see how many troops this guy has. Oh, look at that. I'm just letting him speak. I think he sounds so cool. Only one is now, I won't have him talk like that every time, but I just think he sounds really neat. He kind of sounds like Treebeard from uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, I will join the war against the Savage Orcs because you're in the way of them anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And gets the humans to like me more, and right now I want them to like me. So there you go. Uh, no. Charging in, we will not. Uh, we're not gonna take leadership for casualty replenishment, no. Um, we're not gonna do that. Alright. The above ground spawning pools must be prepared. New skinks will be required if the plan is to be interpreted on schedule. So now we need a new research. We're gonna go ahead and get the sequence of swords spawning. Uh, those spawning pools located underground must be ready. War is always at hand, and fresh source will be needed to fight. So we're going to get uh, plus two unit experience for all new recruits. Um, okay, that's a lot of dark elves coming, but we're going to we're going to secure the Ziggurat of Dawn first. Sorry, elves. All right. Um, you know what? We'll fight it. Um, I don't want you guys to see, sit here and see me auto-resolve every single battle. And again, uh, as you saw, the Skaven are quite weak, especially early game. So, um, these early game fights with the Skaven, I could probably auto-resolve every single one and win every single time. But that's not as fun as, as kind of trying to get a good, good battle plan going here. Again, it's mostly just spears and swords, so we're going to set up here. Uh, or, no, no, we're going to take this hill. Alright, so as you can see, there's this hill here. Oh, we can never get our troops there. Or do we have to be a super thin line? Yeah, alright. Wow, I have a lot more troops than I thought. Okay. Right there. Okay. I'm gonna lock those guys into formation. Nope. We want these guys in a straight line. Also locked into formation. Uh, I'm gonna put Mazda Mundi on the flank, actually, because we have our Temple Guard over here on this flank. And uh, if we look at the Temple Guard real quick. They have a uh, charge defense against larger which you don't have to worry about, but they have halberd <laughs> and they have shield. Um, they are extremely powerful. They have a leadership of 97. Um, 
they have melee attack 33, melee defense of 42, um, and they are armored and shielded, so they should do just fine. Um, we are going to actually have the Bastilladon over here with Mazda Mundi. Just have him fire on the side. And now, you know what? I'm putting Mazda Mundi in the middle. I want him to cast spells from the middle. We, we will have the Bastilladon on the side, though. And then we will have... Our cold one riders come in from the side, but we're gonna charge with our swords first. So as you can see, the computer's going for the high ground. We're just gonna go around them. And we're also going to put our Bastilladon in the melee. Go ahead, go ahead and have Matamundi cast the net of Amintak because I want those guys to be tied down once they are in melee. And our melee units should reach them just about at the right point. We're gonna have our... Now we're gonna have them blast the Skaven Slingers from the top of this hill. That's what I was hoping for. Um, just luckily it turned out that way. Okay, we're going to net the guys on this side. I want to make sure this Bastilladon has a clear line of fire. We have our range units on skirmish already. And we are going to go ahead and send our cavalry into the back of these. So let's let's watch it here. Yes, yes, yes. All right. As you can see, we have a very long battle line, so we are not going to get surrounded. Uh, we also have extremely experienced units, so they should be better than these units that are pretty much up and coming or kind of weak. Uh, we need to get our. We need to go ahead and get our cavalry onto their range. Also want to make sure we get our range back into the fight. They stopped fighting for some reason. We're going to go ahead and net these guys. And here's what we're going to do. This is always awesome. Comet of Cassandora right after. You're going to see what that does here in a second. This guy's just blasting away at these Skaven Slingers. Let's send him in on the flank. Um, so let's watch this spell here. Oh, get started to effect. Well, we can net him again. I apologize for bad camera work. Oops. Oh, it's There's Skaven Lords right here. We're gonna send Mount Mundi after him. Because I tell you what, these Skaven aren't putting up any sort of fight. Except for maybe right back here. Yeah. And that debuff. The debuff is real. Now we're healing up these units. Got the fear, fear going on them. We got our cavalry onto the, the ranged. That's where we want them. We're gonna send our skinks. Skinks are faster units, so we're going to send them after any unit breaking. I'm going to put the temple guard against the board because. Lord is tougher than the average unit. And I'm going to 
about to move me right in the middle here. There we go. Not worried about to slow down too much. Okay, so there's two shattered. This guy just needs to shatter. Which they will eventually. Um, if they keep getting chased, that is. So I have to keep making sure I say that. You didn't need to get chased in order to to shatter completely. Or just get their morale crushed so fast, so quick, that it doesn't matter. Okay, so he's shattered. Send our cavalry against somebody else who's trying to run away. They're shattered, they're shattered. Okay, so let's send our monsters in. There we are, okay. And let's just polish these guys off here. Send our cavalry against some guys, give them some experience. Just taking out some guys in the middle here. Really know where those rats can go. And I'm, again, I'm just doing this for the experience. <clears throat> Always want to make sure that your units are as buffed as possible. Oh, okay, yeah, let's kill the warlord. That will at least gain us some decent amount of experience. Again, a lot of these Skaven units, unless they're higher tier, they do not get you a lot of experience for killing them, so... Where is this guy in all this? Oh, there he is. Just getting knocked around by Monster Mundi's palanquin. Let's see where he's at. He's at... Can't even tell. 163. 103. Monster Mundi's putting the hurt on him. There we go. Alright. So we, again... I mean, we took out 26 units. We barely took any damage. Now, that is a lot thanks to Mazumundi, a lot thanks to the level of our units, but also uh, just based on the fact that, God, the Skaven early game are just so terrible. Which is fine with me. I hate the Skaven completely, so. Alright, so now we need to, to put a new commandment in here. Again, we're going to do public growth and order and income from buildings. And I'm going to upgrade this. I want this this building to have a, a, a garrison. So I want there to be walls on this city so I don't have to keep worrying about it. If the Dark Elves come, let them come. They're not going to have a good time fighting us. I'm also going to get the Shield of Safari. This is a constant effect that gives uh, 11 damage resistance. So, Why should I spare you? Okay. Dark Elves have declared war on us, and that's fine. We were going to declare war on them eventually anyway. Oh. Oh, yes. Now they're going to give me money for military access. I'll take it. Sometimes it's better just to let the diplomacy come to you in this game. Uh, we got our six ancient plaques and our thousand gold for... Uh, building the Holy Ziggurat here at Hexawaddle. Alright. Uh, construct one of the following buildings, Shrine of the Old Ones. Uh, the Great Vortex of the High Elves is under attack. For millennia, the Azur have arrogantly believed it is their magic that has sustained the Vortex. While they have put the Arcane Foundations in place, it is the Great Warding of the Slan, a massive undertaking that keeps most Mage Priests dormant, such as the concentration needed that has kept the Vortex functioning. However, since the comet, the Great Warding suffers, Lord Mazdamundi, always the most licentious of Slan, has set about rectifying this by removing the taint of the warm bloods from his realm. So, we build a Shrine of the Old Ones, we get 20 ancient plaques and 1500 gold. Again, we want more ancient plaques when we get to this ritual of prognostication. Um, looks like the Dark Elves are going to move on Chotek's Causeway. That's alright, that happens sometimes <laughs> when you're fighting a war. Uh, but I am going to 
Hmm. Go this way. Who knows? We need two turns before we can build a uh, garrison there. In the meantime, there's a whole bunch of buildings we can build here in Hexawaddle. Um, all right, so we can get uh, Shrine of the Old Ones, which we need for a quest, or we can get the Sacrificial Altar of Sotek. Um, this is really good for unit recruitment. However, I mean, you get pl plus two public order, untainted plus six, so you reduce that Skaven taint even more, and you get income plus five percent from every building in the region, so that's what we're going to build there. Um, on top of that, we are pretty broke, so we can't really build anything else, so we're going to go ahead and move on. There we are. That's fine with me. Alright, Chosen Ones. Master, force alone will not achieve the great plan. We must seek out Chosen Ones to perform certain tasks. Erect a, erect a beacon to summon them. So they basically want us to have uh, the ability to recruit heroes. Hopefully, I don't know if this will be enough. Sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it allows you to... Ah, just off. Alright, well, they're probably going to take Chotex Causeway, but that's what happens sometimes. Uh, they want us to build... Let's see. Spawn pools of the chosen, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's okay. Um, we can go ahead and build that soon. We still don't have much money. We don't have much of an economy going, but that's because we have a 20 stack with four buildings. And again, the source are very expensive. Um, or lizard men, I'm sorry. But they are extremely expensive in terms of upkeep. So. Let's see what these start going. Yep, there it is. Okay. Just auto resolve it. I ain't gonna worry about it. That was kind of dumb. So we went ahead and raided our lands and then ran away. Oh, military alliance for 1200 gold. These guys keep paying us for things we would give them for free. We'll take it. Took 370 gold. Oh no. Okay, so there's gonna be a rebellion here soon. Um, well, I, I think you guys see what's coming uh, next next uh, episode. We are gonna go ahead and take out these dark elves. Then we're gonna go up here, take the mirror pool of Tepak, and then we're gonna try and wipe out Clan Naw for good. But uh, for today, that is that is enough. Uh, I hope you guys have a good night. And we'll see you later. All right, bye.